It's time for the X and Y show with your host, Mr. Roosevelt. He talks about man topics, lady topics. And relationships. He, he talks, talks about, about love, sex, and infidelities. He even gives good tips. There is no other show that compares to the X and Y show. Oh, yeah. Sit back, take your clothes off, and relax. It's time for the X and Y show where real relationship issues are talked about and addressed. The only place on the planet that tackles the topics that everyone wants to talk about, but no one is brave enough to address. Nothing escapes X and Y, baby. Now, here's your host, Roosevelt Colbert. All right, all right, my listeners out there. Um, as I told you before, I'm going to start making some new changes to the XY show. And some of those changes um, include interviewing special type of celebrities. And um, I have one tonight that I'm interviewing. And I'm sure that you will enjoy this interview as I will enjoy doing it. So I want you to welcome world renowned. Um, porn actress <clears throat> Persia Monor. Monir. How you doing, Persia? <laughs> Monir. <Hi, man. laughs> I don't know why. I said you, <laughs> you, you got it now. Am I the only one that messed it up like that? No, lots of people mess it up, you know, but, um, you know, it's a, it's a Persian name in, um, you know, my real Persian name is Jamile, but, uh, anyway, I used, um, I had to come up with this name very quickly. I was actually shooting for the score group and they said, you can't just have a single name. You got to have a last name. So I just came up with it real fast. I thought of the first Persian female name that came to my mind and it happened to be Monir. And so that that's who I am. So that's what that's what that's what stuck with you over these years. That's right. That's right. Well, it's good to be here. <laughs> nice to have you. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm now, I, you know, I, I stopped watching um, porn a long time ago. Um, but uh, I, I do remember um, seeing you, but I didn't know who you were at the time. And um, so you've been around mm -hmm. pretty much a long time. So. I want to go through segments of your life. We're going to go through segments of your life tonight. We're going to start off early in your career. Then we're going to go to your life as a stripper. And then uh, as you mm -hmm. transition to a porn star and a little bit about what you got going on today. Sounds good? Okay. Sounds good to me. All righty. So let's start with your early life. now. Now I read your book, and we're going to we're, we're get on your book a little later. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, and I know where you're from, but I want you to tell my audience where are you from, and um, also tell me a little bit about your family. About my what? Your family. You, you know where are you from, and tell my me family. a little bit about your family. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I don't know. They're pretty normal folks. I mean, my, my father was, was from Iran. He immigrated over here in the early fifties, you know, and, uh, he went to medical school. First he was a chemist and, and then he, uh, ended up going to medical school in Oklahoma where he met my mother. So my mother's family was from Oklahoma. That's where I was born. Great, mm -hmm. great folks from, from, uh, the heartland from the Midwest. And, um, they met at a spaghetti dinner and then, you know, the rest <laughs> is history. <laughs> and, um, and anyway, we, uh, it, but my father set up a research center in Memphis, Tennessee. So I pretty much mm. grew up in, in Tennessee in the mid South and, uh, oh. and, and had a great, had a great childhood. I'm still in touch with, um, with friends I grew up with, 
As a matter of fact, I'm meeting uh, three of my girlfriends this summer. We're all we are all turning sixty this year, so we're going to have a little <laughs> reunion for our sixtieth birthday. And we we were kids together, so that's pretty cool. Not many people, you know, are still in yeah. touch with friends that they've known since they were kids. So that that's pretty cool. Yeah, it, uh, it is. Cool. And it, it is cool. Yeah, it is too, because you know, and it's fun too, because I've gone through so many changes in my life, and it's fun to have people that love you unconditionally and, you know, accept you for who you are. They don't care if you're a porn star or a preacher or whatever you do, you know? And, right, right. Uh, so, so that's, they're, they're real special people to me, real special friends. Um, oh, what else? Um, you know? I, I guess I had a normal childhood with a normal dysfunctional family. You know, my parents, <laughs> everyone, all, all everyone that like all the girls that I grew up with, all their parents got divorced. Everybody had an affair. It's like America. Everybody did the same thing back then in the sixties and seventies. We, everybody, uh, you know, it was, it was pretty common stuff. And, right, right. uh, I got I got married right out of high school. I was a um a dancer, a, a ballet dancer and I I did some theater and I I married the guy in the orchestra. I married the drummer in the orchestra right out of high school. And you know, we were married for 10 years and uh I I became a nurse and um oh, hold on, hold on. I never <laughs> thought I would So I was a I I was an intensive care nurse. I worked in critical care. And then I used to do uh, traveling nursing, and uh, I got into golf, and I, I, I quit dancing because ballet, we lived in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and the ballet company was just, it just wasn't very good, wasn't very active. So I ended up playing golf and dumping ballet and got pretty serious, got into golf, and it's a very expensive sport. So when I moved to Florida, I got... um I got tired of um of supporting my son and my ex and I got divorced and I had a friend and he said, You're not gonna you can't play golf and support your son on a nurse's salary. He goes, Just go be a stripper. He goes, You're a great dancer. I go, Nah, I like burlesque, I don't think I wanna do it. So he would, back then, you know, in the eighties and the nineties, so this was in the early nineties, uh, that's when the strip clubs were really thriving and it's fun. So I came to the East coast of Florida and I went to some of the clubs and it was just too easy. I walked in, I thought, no, I don't want to do this. So I changed my mind, drove all the way home. That was, uh, you know, across the state. And then I thought, you know, I'm going to go back and give it a try. And I had a ball. So mm -hmm. I ended up doing nursing and stripping together and then after about six months, I, I stopped nursing altogether and just became a stripper. Had the time of my life. Man, was it fun. I, I just love it. It was just like playing dress up every day and making boatloads of money, you know, really fun. So, and so, so I like to move my body and, and I, you know, I'm, I've just always been an exhibitionist. I was just born that way. That's just the way I was, you know, I have sisters and, they're they're not that way. I, I was just always like to be on stage, always the center of attention, and like to be naked and dancing around in my underwear all my life. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so I was bored. I was bored to be a stripper. So um, so, 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 so the man kid is when, mm -hmm. when you were growing up. What age did you start to develop? Uh, you know, physically. You know, you you know. You, what age did you start to, uh, you know, start going into puberty and you were starting to turn into a woman? Pretty young. Uh, eight years old. I mean, by the time eight I was 10, old? I had a full bush. I had a full bush at 10. Really? <laughs> I really <laughs> did. I was, I was young. Some, you know, and some girls just develop early, but, but I was a skinny little kid, you know, but I, I weighed like a hundred pounds, but I had a full C cup and, um, <laughs> you know, I was all, Oh, Oh man. One of my girlfriends and I, we do, we were just nympho horny out of my mind from the time I was 12. I, I mean, out of my brain, it, it just, 
All I, that's all I could think about was wanting to get laid. Really? At 10 you years know, old? Go, go, well, no, around 12. You know, I, I first, I got laid at 14. And, uh, you, you know. You say, four, so 14, you lost your virginity? Yes. And, 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 and planned it, you know, had a, bo- had a boyfriend. We planned it out. We decided we we're going to, we we're going to check this out and do it. You know, and it was, <laughs> it wasn't yeah. so great, but it was exciting, <laughs> you know. <laughs> now, now, why, why but, wasn't it uh, great? He, he basically, at 14, he, he probably didn't know what he was doing, I guess. No, I was shy. You know, we made this thing. We were going to, okay, so he rode his bicycle over to my house, and he snuck through the window, and... I remember him staring at me when I got out of bed and I, I ran back to bed and got under the covers and <laughs> he was like, he's like, now you, he's like, you got to spread your legs. And I go, they are. He goes, no, they're not. <laughs> you know? and so we, you know, we did, it, it didn't work so great the first time, but we managed to make it work later. <laughs> <laughs> so now, 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 you had mentioned in your book that um, mm-hmm. your 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 ex husband he really couldn't keep up with you sexually, which I thought was kind of weird. Um, you know, I, I always thought, well, I still do think that one of the main criteria for my future wife she has to like to fuck, and she has to like to fuck quite frequently. So I thought when you was when I was reading that in your book that you know you wanted to fuck and he didn't want to fuck you had to get on him and kind of how to force him to was I mean was that all the time like you always had to do that like to corner him to fuck him or that was just when he was not just in the mood or you know you was always out really? you always out sexed him he just. He, he, he he didn't like to get intimate, you know, and some people, you know, he liked to screw, but, you know, he's just one of these people. He just wanted to get it off and wash it off and go watch TV. And, you know, I could, I could hang out in the bedroom all day long. I mean, I could just romp and romp and romp. I, I you know, I guess I was just a little oversexed maybe, but I didn't think so. And he was like, is that all you think about? And I said, yeah, pretty much is. <laughs> You know, <laughs> that's that's what I want to do. But no, I mean, you know, we we were actually really good friends. Um, but I was very frustrated sexually. It, you know, I wasn't getting it like I needed it at all. And you know, I like I like so the me, intimacy me, part of sex. I like foreplay, and I, I I'm very oral. I like to kiss. I mean, he didn't like his dick suck. Go figure. I married yeah, a man who didn't yeah, like his I, dick suck. Yeah, when when I read that, I was like, now, "Now you don't think he was gay, do you?" Uh, I'm I'm just asking. No, 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 oh. no, not at all. But you know, I, I shouldn't say not that because you know, I mean, gay guys like their dick suck too, I guess. But I, I just I, I can't fathom a guy not one his dick suck because most guys that are married, you know, and been in relationships, they have to pretty much almost beg their wives or girlfriends to suck the dick. So you was willing to do it, and he really didn't want it, and that that blew my mind when I read that. Yeah, you don't you don't meet too many men that don't want oral sex, but I actually I have met a couple of men um, that weren't interested in oral sex. Now, it's, I, I, when I talk about, I mean, I'm talking about two or three in my life, but I guess I guess they're out <laughs> there, and I've I. I've also met people who are like, well, sex just isn't a, a priority to me. And I think as I get older, it, it's it's definitely not as important it, it was as when I was in childbearing years, you know, of course. Um, you know, and I think humans are just built that way. You're built, you're horny for a reason because, you you know, your body wants to breed. It wants to have babies, and you know, so... Right, right. I, I, I think but it's not, just not, natural. But- some people, some people just... Uh, you know, are designed differently, but I definitely uh, needed a partner that wanted to screw like I did, you know, and, but I, I didn't waste any time, you know, I, I, I got out there and got, got laid. (laughs) (laughs) 
So, so, so yeah, not, you, not, not so much. I mean, you know, I, I've, I've just, I've had lots of relationships and everything. And, um, and I wish I'd gotten in the porn business in, in the eighties, but it just wasn't socially acceptable in my world. I wasn't in a world mm-hmm. where that was acceptable at all. You know, having parents that are doctors and things like that. So, you know, cause I got an offer to be a showgirl in Vegas when I was 15. Cause I had the, I had the chest for it and I had a teach, I had a dance teacher that was actually a showgirl in Vegas. And, um, mm. I, I wanted to go out there and they, that would have been a great environment for me. But of course my parents wouldn't let me do it. And I wasn't, I wasn't brave enough to go out on my do own and do it at that age. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I could have, but I, I, I really needed their support at that point in my life. It was a little young, you know? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, the man, you, you consider yourself, obviously, back then, you were a nympho. Are you still a nympho, or you, you, you wouldn't say that right now? No, I I am a nympho, but um, no, not as much as I was in my 20s and 30s. But really? I still, no, not as much. Uh-uh. <laughs> okay. But yeah, you know what I it is? We're... It's it's more the the partner you're with. It's more intellectual, and I, I'm more stimulated intellectually than physically. But no, believe me, I I I like to have my fun, and but. No, not as much. Not as much physically. I would have. I I could have like. I'd be panting if I saw someone hot or really had chemistry. It'd be really hard for me to like control myself. You know, right. when, when I was when I was younger, I can control myself now. Oh, I see. I see. So you're more disciplined. Mm-hmm. Right okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, uh, how about uh, you? Long- you ever, have you ever been that horny? Well, I'm still is. <laughs> you know, I, I wake up thinking about pussy. I go to sleep thinking about pussy. I dream about pussy. That's just me, you know. But, you know, you can't compare all guys with me because, you know, all guys are not like me. But uh, I will consider myself a nymph or a pervert, whatever you want to call me. Um, you know, that's just something that I am. I'm just high. I, my libido is very, very high. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I don't let it get out of hand. I don't disrespect anybody, but it's just the way I am. You know, so every woman I meet, I imagine fucking them. I mean, that's just the way I think. You know, I'm a Scorpio. I can't help it. You know, but, um, you know, like I said, yeah, don't Scorpios, all- Scorpios are horny. You say Scorpios are what? <laughs> yeah, I've had a couple of Scorpio lovers. They're horny. They're horny guys. <laughs> Yeah, I, but I, I tell can't. you, I tell you the best, the best in the zodiac to me, the hottest lovers are Aries. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know. I beg to differ on that. I, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> oh, you may, you may know have an I'm Aries. Going. You may have some Aries in your chart, and you don't even know it. Uh, <laughs> So how often do you do you masturbate? Like, how many d- times a day do you come? Well, see, I don't jack my dick. And let me tell you why I don't. I don't like to waste my cum. Um, not that I can't mm. make more. I know that. I can make cum and all of that kind of stuff. But I don't like to waste it. You know, even when I'm with a woman, I don't like to just come on her chest. You know, that that's wasting to me. You know, I like for her to uh, swallow or I like for uh, it to go inside her, you know, some kind of way, uh, um, you know, that kind of thing. You know, I don't like wasting my cum. So when you're jacking my dick, that's a waste of cum, you know, just going out and shower drain and all that kind of shit. You know, that's that's a waste of cum. And I'm not into it. And I'm, and I'm not knocking anybody that does that, you know, that do it. You know, you do your thing, but I'm just, for me, I don't like to waste my, my nut. So, you know. Right. See, now, when I used to masturbate a lot, I mean, there's, there were days I never got out of bed. I could I could play with myself for eight hours. Really? And, 
just come and come and come and come. I needed, I just had to get it out of my system. And, uh. <laughs> now, are you a skeeter? <laughs> a, a what? A skeeter. Skeeter. You, you mean a squirter? Oh, squirter. A squirter. Yeah, squirter, skeeter. Yeah. Um, I think all women squirt. If you, you got it, there's a certain little pad that you hit inside that you can get women to squirt. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I have definitely squirted. I actually have a squirting video, but I'm not, I don't, there, there's women that just do it automatically. Like I, I, I was in the studio one time. I actually hired a makeup artist when I found out that she was a squirter. I hired her to do a scene and it was just ridiculous. I, I I've got an umbrella out as a joke because she was <laughs> soaking the studio down. <laughs> you, yeah. you know, and you wonder now, when you meet those women that squirt, you wonder where all that fluid's coming from. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, that that that's that's uh that that is beautiful. That is, that is beautiful. Um, but um Is that a turn now, on now, to you? Uh, you say what now? Is that a turn on uh a woman that squirts? Does that turn you on? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a turn on. Um, it's not necessary, but it's a definite turn on. Um, what r- what really turns me on is a hair pussy. Um, I just found out. I didn't know that. You know, I did a show about fetishes a couple of weeks ago, uh, and I didn't know that when you like pubic hair, that's a fetish. It's called pubophobia, and I didn't know that. Now, did really? you know that? Yeah, did, did I've you, never heard of pubophobia. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, I'm not the only one. I was like, "What the fuck?" You know, pubophobia the the thrill of of sexual thrill of pubic hair. That's what it is. And I was like, "Damn, that's that's my fetish." You know, I love a hair pussy. Something about a hair pussy it just really gets me on. Um, I don't like bald pussies. I think they're disgusting. But you know. I, you know, to each his own. A lot of women doing that shit now, shaving with bezier and waxes and all that shit. And I think that's disgusting. It looks like a shaved slit hot dog or something. And I don't <laughs> like, you know, but, you know, like I said, you know, to each his own, but I like a hair pussy. That's what gets me off. That's what really gets me going. So, Well, you need to see mine in person so you can nuzzle it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice and soft and furry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but you you you, messed, you told me you were going to shave, and I, you know, I, yeah, I was like, why is she shaving? You, you say you was going to shave the bottom of it. Well, I you might know? because I have a girlfriend I like to play around with, and um, she can't stand hairy pussy at all. So oh. no, but I'm going to leave the top. I mean, for crying out loud, it grows, you know. So. <laughs> Um, but I've had it. I, I think people, I think men especially prefer hair and it, it's kind of a really? little, uh, it, it, absolutely men prefer hair. They sure do. Now, you know, and if all, they, all, if they say know, they don't, they're lying. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's like an in the closet type thing because all my friends that I've talked white or black or Hispanic, you know, I tell them I like a hair pussy, and they're like, oh, no, no. the white guys, oh, no, bro, how did you like all of that, bro? You don't want all that in your mouth, bro? Come on, dude. You know, and and I'm like, no, that's that's what I like. You know, no, no, bro, you want a ball pussy so you can lick the pussy and it doesn't get all in your mouth. Bro. But I like that. You know, I like the hair getting in my mouth. You know, that that's what gets me off. But a lot of my friends say they don't like it, so I believe them, but they're I guess they're full of shit then, huh? Well, first of all, the like the hair isn't on the clit or the lips, and it it's easy to pull it out of the way, like for oral sex. But I do prefer it shaved at the bottom. Sometimes it feels better um, when it's smooth down there. Um, so you know, wow. and when I was a stripper, I used to I used to shave. I, I used to wax it and have all kinds of different patterns, and then I had. There's some bars that required you to have hair and then other bars wanted you to trim it up. And, uh, but it's my pussy. I'm going to do what I want with it. 
Because your pussy, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> well, I had a manager used to tell me, say, Persia, when are you going to trim that thing up? Go look at everybody in the bar. They're following me around because I'm the only one with a hairy pussy. You know, I go, I'm not trimming it at all. <laughs> now, years ago, I used to work at a strip club. I think I told you that. I used to work at um, one down in Miami. And um, some of the girls that worked there, they were going to school and at the same time while they were stripping. They was basically stripping to stripping to pay for their school. Um, and some of them were nursing students. <clears throat> so you actually <laughs> did the opposite. You were already a nurse right. and you transitioned into a stripper. Um, now, why is that? Do you think it was only because of money or it was because of the thrill or there was something else or you just did it just, just to try some new shit? Well, I, I, I think it's kind of good to reinvent yourself, you know, and change professions. I mean, I, after I, I got kind of tired of seeing people die. I'm very, you know, grateful for my knowledge in nursing and I know I can save a life. I could do that in my sleep, but I got, it's, it started to be kind of a depressing environment for me. I can really help people, but I needed to get out of reality and get into kind of a, uh, you know, a fantasy world, which it was. The bar is a total fantasy. And I thought, oh, my gosh, no wonder men come in here and get rid of their <laughs> stress. I mean, you know, the music and the lights and, oh, it just smelled like perfume. And it was just a it okay. was just a party. It was a party every yeah. day. And and I loved it. And I I needed that. I needed uh, I needed that fantasy world. And, and like I said, it was the time of my life. It was. uh the economy was good and, and, uh, there were lots of bars you could go to. People weren't, weren't so hung up. There weren't a lot. Everything wasn't so politically correct. And, you know, it was just fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a good, good time. time. Good time. Yep. Yep. But I want to ask you this now. You, you were a nurse and a stripper for a while. How long did you do that? Oh, about, about six months. You know, and it was fun. It was like, you know, I, I led a double life. I, I only told two people that I was a stripper. And so I'm going to the East Coast. I'm going to Fort Lauderdale to strip. And then I'm driving back to Fort mm -hmm. Myers where I lived and I do my nursing job. And so it was kind of exciting. You know, I, I'd, I'd get this hotel room and stay over there for three days and go to this club and dance and, you know, I, 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 I go to the same little restaurant every night and eat and, you know, I was meeting all these new people. And so it was just kind of living this little secret life that no one knew about. So that, that was kind of fun. Right. Like a, like a, like a big thrill, you know, a weekend thrill. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's like having an affair, you know, and, um, yeah. Of course, I eventually, I eventually told my family. You know, for for various reasons, and I didn't care that they knew. I just didn't want my parents to worry. People people have all these stereotypes and ideas of how stripping or or porn stars or whatever the the lifestyle is, you know. And so I knew my parents right. would just get hung up on that and worry about me. So because I, I would have told them, uh, they they were pretty free thinking people actually. So you know. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, so anyway, that they eventually found out, but a lot of, a lot of girls, they were either real open with their families, but I would say most of them did try to hide it. You know, they, they wasn't accepted. You know? When your parents found out, when your parents found out what happened, <laughs> I'm curious. Oh, well, my father got mad and said, oh, well, so you lied to us. Well, I mean, you know, he was a dirty old man. He was going to strip clubs and seeing strippers himself so, he is dirty. so yeah so he's just a hypocrite uh and then <laughs> and then my mother my mother and i were very close and i ended up going to memphis and dancing at a club there and it was my favorite club to dance at so that was really great because uh it was like having an out-of-town job 
I, I didn't have to get back to work to Florida. I could go up and like hang out with my mom for a whole month and dance at that club. That's the great thing about stripping. You know, you could go, you could travel all over the country Anywhere. And, and yeah, go to different clubs and get a job. It's great. Yep. Yeah. So, so you don't strip currently anymore, not in a club per se. You just do a lot of online stuff, right? Um, yes, yes, mostly, mostly. I mean, you, you okay. know, I also, you know, if I, if I travel to Europe or I, I meet fans, I meet people, you know, I don't, I thought, I, I never did mm -hmm. feature, like go to clubs and feature. Um, I thought about it, but I never did it. Oh, no. yeah. And, and I think there's actually some clubs reach out to me once in a while. There was one in Houston that wanted me to come down there and feature at their club. And I don't know. I, I would think about it. I would think about doing that maybe. You know, I'm still in good enough shape where I can do it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're in good enough shape. Oh, yeah. they probably go. Yeah. They, I'd that. probably yeah. get on stage and they go, who's that fucking grandma up there? <laughs> 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 Who brought grandma? Who brought grandma to the club? No, nah, they, <laughs> <laughs> nah, they wouldn't say that. They wouldn't say that. If I like you, that's that's saying something. So, trust me, you all right. You are now. Now, speaking of appearance, now I know you. You you hate fat guys. I mean, you you loathe what fat guys. Mean? I know. I, that don't, I read your book. No, and, I don't uh, hate fat guys. Oh no, every. Oh yes, you do. Yeah, everything you said <laughs> that this guy is fat ass can't get in my car. I gotta get his fat ass out of my car. He he wants to come date me with his fat ass and his obese fat ass. And oh, like, hey, like, god damn! She really hate fat guys, and that's that's fine, you know, because I know uh, you know Miami and Fort Lauderdale. So you know. Why would you be with a fat guy when you can be with a guy who's got a eight pack and all that? Oh, you're shit. no, you're wrong. But, um, so I, wish, I know you. Hate I, fat I wish guys, Biggie was but, still uh, alive, man. I would have fucked <laughs> Biggie. Uh, no, I I had a, a I dated a fat guy, man. He was he was incredible in bed. You, you talking about the one? You talking about huh? the one? You talking about the wannabe boyfriend, yes, right? And, and he book? was actually very good in bed. He was good. He, so now, why why was he a wannabe boyfriend? Why he couldn't be a boyfriend? I know, I just didn't love him. I, I didn't feel that way about him. You know, I I liked him and I liked fucking him, but I didn't want to marry oh, him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like it. You know, if your tool shed's okay, too so big, I, I like I like to see a guy's cock. It, you know, a, a guy can have an eight inch cock, but if his stomach is Hanging out over the thing, it looks like it's three inches instead of eight inches, you know. Um, but, 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 no, believe me, fat guys have charisma just like, uh, thin guys. So, no, I don't hate fat guys at all. I, I actually prefer, um, a thicker kind of guy, a more muscular, wider body guy. But. Mm hmm. So that's what get so that's what kind of guys get your juices running, kind of like a like a Arnold Schwarzenegger oh, type body, maybe. I, you know what? It's it's so much personality for me. Um, it it really is hmm. personality. Uh, is what it's all about. It's not it's not so much what you, what you look like. And, and it's just like like even shooting with like porn stars. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I, you just never know. You're going to have chemistry. I've, I've had really great chemistry with guys that if I saw them on the street, I'd, I didn't think I'd ever be attracted to them, you know? So. Mm. So. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, would you, would you consider yourself to be bisexual? Are you bisexual? I guess so. You told me you had a Oh, girlfriend. yeah, I'm definitely bisexual. But I, I, you know, to be in a relationship with a woman, women are a little too emotional for me to handle. I, I don't, I'm not a, a lesbian and I have a lot of lesbian friends. I am not, I, 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 I'm not a lesbian, but could I be in a relationship with a woman? I don't, I don't know if I could do that again. The, the women that I was involved with, I would consider them relationships, but the longest one was like a year. 
but we were pretty, we were very involved sexually, but, uh, but I'm not a lesbian. I, I think you're, I think you're born. I think if you're gay, okay. you're born gay. You know, I, I don't think it's something a lot of people. Oh, absolutely. Really? Without a doubt. Absolutely. No doubt in my mind. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. All right. So now I want to get in your porn life. What, what actually, what got you in a porn? Like you was a script, you was making good money. What made you say, yeah, I want to do that. I want to go on a camera and, and, uh, you know, do porn. What, what, what got well, you in Well, I started that? a soft website, um, because I was actually had a girlfriend and we were selling websites before, uh, restaurants before anybody had a website, we were going out, we, you, you want to get on the web and they're like, Oh no, I'm never going to be on the internet. And yeah, it, yeah people, I remember that. people yeah. didn't. Yeah. And this was in the early nineties. People were like, Oh no, no, no. I don't need a website. I advertise in the newspaper. And you know that. So yeah. I, I thought that was kind of funny. So I started a soft site with just like little bikini pictures and stuff, but there was, there was no one on the internet. I'd go on the internet and there was no one to really connect with, you know? Um, and that was back <laughs> when you could buy four letter words. You could buy fuck.com or nude.com. I should have bought a lot of those, but they were expensive dot coms. You still had to have money to buy them, but you, then you could make a fortune off of them later. Uh, and then I just had, I had Selling them. fans yeah. that or clients that came to the club that would dance me regularly. Like, you got to get into porn. You have the personality for it. You're built for it. Uh, and then I, I had a friend. He was a huge porn star follower. And he used to print out how much these porn stars made. And he just, he would take pictures of me and in, encourage me. So I started to, so then I got in some magazines. So then I got in gallery. I got in cherry. I got in, um, oh, what else did I get in gent? So I got in different magazines and did some photo spreads yeah. and then I got into porn. Then I, I just decided I, I'm going to go hardcore. You know, this is silly. And I'm glad it's probably the best thing I ever did. I loved it. Mm. Now, what kind of porn did you do? What genre were you in? Were you in like um, regular porn, anal, girl on girl or, um, oh, I, I, I mean, let me ask you this. What, won't you do in porn? Like if they actually do that, you're like, Oh no, fuck that. Well, I'm what, not doing that. Always, or are you open to well, everything? What always blew my mind was people like, Oh, you can't, you, you can't be with black guys. You can't be with like, what is the big deal? I didn't see any <laughs> color. I, what, what's the difference if I'm with a black cock or a white cock? It, it was like a forbidden. No, you don't want to, you're, you're going down the tubes. If you're fucking black guys now, it's like, Oh really? Uh, so I, I mean, I worked for, I had an agent in, um, in LA and, you know, so I did some, some, some different shoots and I did girl, girl. I shot for girlfriends films quite a bit, naughty America. But I mean, when it came up to, well, we, will you do this scene with this, with this black guy? Well, yeah, sure. But at the same time, I didn't want to limit myself and do. Like, like I had a girlfriend, all she did was black guys. She wouldn't, she was white. She wouldn't fuck any white guys. And I said, why are you limiting yourself? Why don't, why don't you do more? You know? And, uh, so I did, I did kind of everything. Mm. I did everything. Uh, you know, but I, I did some shoots. Like I did a, a, a shoot, um, that I wouldn't be crazy about. It was, yeah. I don't, uh, I don't even want to talk about it, but I mean, there were some things I did that I kind of regretted or la or laughed about later. And I thought that was stupid. I shouldn't have done that. It, it just felt it, the shoot itself wasn't disrespectful, but it was just a little, it was degrading or it, it wasn't something I supported. And then, so later if people would ask me to do some kinds of shoots. I go, no, I'm not interested in doing that. You know, I'm, you know, uh, okay. And I don't. I, now, what was your go ahead? Go ahead. No, you I, say you don't. I what? don't prefer anal. It you know it takes a lot of you, you know some girls just like love anal and 
and they're anal queens. That's their thing. They like to do the anal mm. thing. And, and it's a, it's definitely a fetish and, and people love it. I, uh, I've liked it. I, I can say I've definitely enjoyed anal sex, but it wouldn't be my favorite thing to do. No, it's an, it's an exit. I got a nice vagina. Mm. Let's just use my vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's something that I never had the desire to right. do. You know, I never did it. I'm not, I, that's, and I won't, I mean, why would I stick my dick in the ass when I got a nice pussy right there, you know? Right. Uh, you know, or, or mouth, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking yeah. in the ass. You know? But I bet but it yeah. happens. Okay, all right. So now what was your uh, preferred? It happens. Sometimes what? it happens accidentally. I mean, you can really be nice and wet and, really go into town on the vagina and sometimes it'll slip right in the ass if you're really into it and, and you're loose. I've had that, I've had that happen before and I don't have a loose ass either, but where everything you're just sweating and getting into it. And I've had that happen before. That's pretty fun. It just went on in. You like your ass to be lit? Yeah. Don't you? Oh, you, yeah, you don't like you that? like your ass lick too? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let me toss your salad, baby. <laughs> you funny. All right. Now let me ask you this. What was your what was your preferred dick size to work with? You like big dicks or you like average dicks or you like kind of small dicks where you can kind of do your own thing with um, what was your preferred size? I don't really have one. I like the big, big dicks. So big dicks kiss. feel good kiss. when because they stretch. Because I got big pussy lips and they they really stretch the pussy lips out and that feels good. Um, but every penis mm-hmm. feels different, and so, sometimes an average penis feels the best. So, uh, but. Mm. But I don't want less than six inches. You know, I, I got, I got a nice, I got a nice deep pussy. Okay. I can take a lot of cock. So I, I, you know, I like to have a, at least, at least six, six inches. Otherwise that little, that sucker's going to keep popping out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I hear you. I hear you. Okay. All right. Now. I noticed now when I was before I interviewed you, I I, I, look, I did some watching of your old movies, and I noticed that you allow guys to come inside of you when you're doing yes. porn. Um, are you not worried that you'll catch something? Catch something because I mean, like you actually trust the industry to protect you, and the reason why I ask you that. Is because I remember a few years ago, a porn star exposed a lot of actresses to herpes. You probably remember that. And um, it, it also, it was a belief that John Holmes, which for those of you who don't know, he was like a famous uh, porn star back in the 70s, that he actually died from um, an AIDS-related right. illness. So that doesn't worry you that you... I mean, that the guys coming you, I mean, because those motherfuckers, I, I mean, I don't trust nobody like that. But that doesn't worry you that, you know, when the guys coming you, that's why I could never do porn because, you know, the directors want the cum shot, you know, on the titties or in the mouth, or whatever. And I would always be coming in the pussy. So I would be <laughs> fired the first well, day. <laughs> so I knew I could never be. Well, virus, you know, first of all, the HIV virus is, is, uh, Outside the body, it's a wimp. It dies immediately. But uh, for my productions, I require testing that week. You know, the industry at some point required it just that month. So I, no one's coming in my pussy unless I've, I've seen their test that week. It isn't a month out because you will catch something and, and people do get sick. I, I worked with a little porn star. She was young and hot. But she kept getting chlamydia. I mean, well, she just kept getting stuff over and over. Not and and not real bad stuff. She, her body just couldn't tolerate it. Um, 
So I, and I think if you're super active and you're doing it all the time, you know, the, the risk is, is much greater. But like I said, I've, I've done over 300 films and for, for my own production, my requirements are different than the industry standard. But I, like I said, I require testing, uh, that week. Otherwise you're not, there's no cream pie going on, you know, but as far, you know, yeah. Show me where someone's gotten HIV orally. I, I, I don't, don't even think it's documented, you know? Uh, but you know, herpes, I think at least one in five people have it. And if you, you see someone with an open sore, which I, I haven't seen it in the industry. I've seen it out of the industry before I was with the guy and I'm like, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, buddy. You got, you got some active herpes. You got some what herpes going on down here. That, 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 there's no sex going on here. So, you know, you, you gotta be, you gotta be careful. <laughs> you know, it's time to go. Time to go. Yeah. Grab your coat. Uh, yeah. so, but yeah, is it scary? I think, and I, I so, so I wasn't so, in so it. That- I wasn't in it that long. You know, I got, uh, let's see, I went hardcore in what, 2007. And mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, I, I did it pretty hard until 2010, 2011. But, but actually I wouldn't want to be active in fucking a lot of the guys in the industry that are super active. That would, that would concern me. And I, like I said, they would have to have a, a, a test. Uh, if I were going to fuck them, they'd have to, okay, let's, let's, let's go, let's go get our blood drawn today and then we'll see how everything looks, you know? So that, so you, that, that answers my, my my next question, which was, um, you know, exactly. So I guess you don't trust the industry to protect you and I don't blame you, but now after that, I would think the industry protects its workers more but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. What exactly is the industry doing to protect the actresses and actors? Is it currently a month out? Because I mean, that's, if that's the case right now, well, that's I don't know bullshit. what it, it, if, if, if they, all they require. I, not, I, I don't actively shoot anymore. So, but uh, you know, when you say the industry, you know, you're talking about a large group of people. There's nobody in charge. Um, you know, Certainly Congress doesn't regulate the industry and they, they're, they're too stupid to recognize and legit, legitimize <laughs> the industry because they could tax it and make some revenue, you know, but of, of course their, their constituents. Yeah. Oh, hey, good, good Lord. If, if you endorsed, uh, pornography, well, well, then you're, you're going to hell and you're not going to get any votes. Um, but, you know, people are in charge of their own body and you don't have to do anything you don't want to. And so I think people in in the industry respect other people's bodies. And uh, I all the people that I ran into were, were very professional, you know, um, and, and they had their standards. So but but like I said, the. If, if you've got a male porn star that just had a test a month ago and it's the end of the month and who knows who he's fucking in his private life. Forget that he's on the set. You got to worry about other people privately and how many people you're connecting with. Uh, So, you know, he made, uh, you know, the the girl in the industry may be just clean as a whistle, but who knows what his girlfriend or his 10 girlfriends have. That's, that's why, I require the the testing, right, right. you know, more frequently for myself. But people are in charge of their own bodies and what they do. You know, you can't you can't rely on someone else. Mm. Don't don't blame somebody else. You know, like like uh, they got aim shut down. You know, some guy said, "Well, the industry didn't protect me." You know, but he's getting fucked in the ass. I mean, he was he was doing gay porn, but what was he doing in his private life? You know, how many butt buddies did he have in the bar? You know, <laughs> so, you know, he tried to, he, he didn't take responsibility for his cock and where that thing was going. And he got HIV, wham, wham. And, you know, he actually sh- shut down a good service that, that they were doing in LA. But, you know, that's what happens. You know, 
<laughs> now, let me, let me, have you, I know you had boyfriends in the past, and they, while you were doing porn, um, uh, how did they feel about that? Like you working in porn, you know, while you're their boyfriend, were they like, like, yeah, you got to stop this, you know, blah, 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 why are we going together, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, how did they feel, um, you know, boyfriends that you work, while you're working in porn, you have boyfriends. How did they well, feel about that? Did my, they like it or did they? I, I, well, I think it takes a special person, a strong person to handle it. My last boyfriend, he he would brag on it too much. You know, it was like, oh, no, not again. Oh, yeah, she's a porn star. And, oh, she does. And I'm like, shut up. Don't tell people I'm a porn star. They don't know how to handle that, you know. So he was super proud and wanted to tell the whole world about it. Um Oh, I don't know. Uh, like I said, I don't walk down the street and, and announce it, but, but I'm always impressed when people see me and recognize me. You know, uh, you mm. know, that's happened. I, I was walking down a back street in New York, not a man, and a guy saw me from his office, ran down, he goes, Persia, and he runs out down, I go, how did you recognize me from the window? <laughs> And he goes, Oh, I'm a huge fan. And I'm like, wow. I mean, I, that was just unbelievable, you know, but, um, oh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a, another boyfriend because I've had the same boyfriend for so long. So it's been a while. Oh, I can't even remember the last boyfriend before him. So, but, but, but the last <laughs> one I had, he, um, yeah, he liked, he liked that. Uh, that I was in poor. You know, I think if you try to change someone or tell them you can't be that person, uh, then, then you're setting yourself up for failure. I think you have to kind of, you know, accept what people do and, and whatever goes with that territory, you kind of have to accept it or not, you know? You, you want to get married again one day, uh, Persia, or that's, you've done it once. Been there, done oh, it, I've always it. been in, in kind of long relationships, so they're all kind of like marriages. Um, it's not a goal. Nope. Uh, I mean, do I, I love companionship and I love mm -hmm. intimacy. Um, but it can also be pretty boring, too, <laughs> with the same person. I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty social and. And, and <laughs> some, so many times in a relationship, people start having control issues or they're needy or something's going on. I don't, you know, uh, I, I seem to be better off yeah. single. I'm, I've, I've, I've got a pretty strong personality. So mm. it, it, it takes a, a, a person that's just as strong as me to be with me. I'm a lot to handle, baby. <laughs> I'm a lot of woman. So, how about? Yeah, yeah, speaking of that, how tall are I'm you? I'm short. I'm um, I'm five five, but people think I'm like five seven or eight because yeah, oh, because really? I got long legs, long arm. I'm long all over. Everything about me's long. And of course, when I wear heels, I'm six feet tall. But but I'm I'm not a tall woman. I'm a I'm kind of short. Well, I'm five five. I'm average. I'm average. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought, you know, from your I thought you was like five, at least five, ten, five, eleven, or something no, like that. No. So now, so you wrote a book and, you know, is, is about your life as a stripper. And it was, I read the book. It's very good. Um, the book is called The Book of Johns and it's very genuine I, I liked it it very it, it made me think about the time that i worked in the strip club i can smell the liquor stained rugs i can <laughs> smell the cigarettes um it was very realistic very good book so you know for all of you who haven't um bought it yet you have to get this book of john's um written by persia i uh, persia why did you write this book well i i wrote it a, a long time ago i started just keeping notes uh, because the, the script club was so comical. You meet so many characters. So I started, you know, keeping some story. And then people would ask me questions about, you know, what do I, what I experienced in strip club. So I started, I wrote all these little short stories 
and I and I was just going to compile some short stories for some fans and give it to them. And then I had a couple of girlfriends. I said, what do you think? You know, I wrote this little book called The Book of Johns because every guy's name in it's John and every girl's name in it's Jane. And they, <laughs> they're like, oh, no, you need to kind of incorporate your life and turn it into a memoir. Um, so it, it is just a segment of my life, but it does. And then, of, of course, as you mm-hmm. read, then I do explain how I got into porn and, you know, what happened. So who knows if I'll write a sequel? Because I found in a box the other day where I had written um, some stuff about my porn life, some porn stories, you know, and experiences. Because let me tell you, mm-hmm. if you don't, I think you and I discussed this before the last time we, we spoke uh if you don't write down the details when they happen, it's really hard to go back and try to remember something. It, you're not going to remember the little details and, and all the little incidences and things that happen. So, you know, as far as writing goes, I, I kept those notes over the years and then, and then compiled them and, and wrote it that way. And I took their suggestions. So, you know, with hmm. writing, Writing is consuming, but I tell you when I did it too, is traveling a lot. I'd love to write when I'm on the plane. So I just drink a lot of coffee and start writing. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. And I like, I I think the book is an easy read. I think it, I think it flows, you know, and it's not Mm -hmm. too long either. Don't you agree? Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. I would definitely agree to that. And I like the way you have the short chapters too. That was, uh, you know, it doesn't, it, you don't have to read that much to get to the next chapter. And so it's like another, uh, it's, I imagine, imagine like you're driving a car and you're not driving a straight line. You have like turns, you know, and I like that about the book. Like every few pages, there is another yeah. turn, you know, so that was yeah. very good. And it is on, it, the book is on Amazon, um, uh, but I also, sell my own autograph. If people want an autograph copy, they can get it directly through me and they can email me at Persia's palace at gmail.com. I do still have my website. You know, people go to my website and they're like, well, I can't join your site, but you can, you could, it's called Persia's palace.com, but you do have to email me for the link and I can send you a link to join. Mm-hmm. So if people do want to join the site, my website, cause I've got eight terabytes of content, you know, I got a okay. lot of content on there. And it's my own, it's my, all my productions and stuff that, and it's, you know, a lot of the stuff's been, uh, you know, ripped off and put on the internet, but there's also some scenes and video clips and stuff that have not been. And of course the quality is a lot better when you have your own personal website. Right, right, right. Now, would you, would you say writing a book was like a therapy to you and, you know, from all those experiences? Oh, absolutely. You know, it, it's, it's cleansing because you get, you get all your thoughts down on paper and you get to, it's, it's your history. So I would say it's a very cathartic, uh, uh, thing. It very, very much mental therapy. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I kind of sense that too. It's like you're able to not talk about it, but write about it, that it probably helped you, you know, to, to do that. So I kind of sensed that when I was yeah. reading. The well, book. I think, I think any, anything you um, create, you anything know, I, a person I, I, creates, whether you're a painter or an artist, it's all mental therapy. It's doing something to your soul. You get it out of your soul. So, uh, I, I'm lucky I have the, uh, the ability to, mm-hmm. to write and, and to do those kind of things. I, but because it, it feels good, you know, but, um, now, now, then the books is the book is out. You you already said that you can get it on Amazon. Is that the only place you can get it right now? Amazon. Yeah, well, and no, your me. Website, you can right? email me. Uh, okay, say your say, it's say your Persia's email address Palace. one more time. Persia's is plural. Persia's Palace at gmail dot com. Okay, Persia's Palace at gmail dot com. And I'm, I'm, I'll also post that on my website as well with, um, a link to, uh, your book, um, and, um, the interview as well. So they can hear that. So I'm going to post it on my website for a little while as well. So, um, you know, just to show my appreciation and uh, kind of help you out a little bit and send some of my people that way. 
Um, so um, now tell me, how else can people find you? Are you on Twitter? And, and I know we talked about it. There's this guy imposting. Uh, there's a, an imposter about your Instagram page. No, you I don't, don't have do an Instagram, Instagram page, and right? I don't like. Uh, I have Facebook, but it's not my porn personality. I don't. I don't like Facebook. There's too many family. That it's it's. Yeah, that's too straight. You know, I used to do, uh, what was it called? It was called face porn. <laughs> that was hilarious. Um, that was years ago, and I used to be real active on face porn. Um, but I, I'm not on, on that one anymore. But I am on Twitter, <laughs> at Persia Monir. Um, you know, and I, I at, at Persia Say Monir that again. is my Twitter. My porn name, at Persia Mornier. Okay. And I even had okay. a false, someone yeah. else uh, created an, another account when I first put my Twitter account up years ago. Someone tried to copy that one. And, you know, they put up, they steal your pictures and they, what the, the guy on Instagram is trying to get money out of people, trying to pose as me and make money and trying to get people to send them money. But, they, you know, they do this to, to, Hollywood stars, porn stars, all kinds of people, you know. Um, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought that, like I told you before, I thought that was weird that on your Instagram, you only had like tw- right. 15 or 20 pictures. And I was like, what? That don't even, that don't even look right. So, you know, right. I, that is, it was kind of weird. But, um, Okay, so that definitely is an imposter, folks. So don't right. send that motherfucker no money. Um, she only has a Twitter page. So, you know, just Twitter, Twitter her if you want to talk to her or email her if you want a copy of the book autographed. And I'm sure she'd be glad to, uh, send that to you. You can also find that on my website. And you know my website, www.thexyshow.com. Um, it'll be there as well, and as well as a link to her book. The book is called The Book <laughs> of Johns, and it's written by Persia. <laughs> and uh, it's a very good book, so if you don't have it, go out and get it. And if from, that's coming from me, then Thank it's a you. damn good book. You know that. So I'm putting my Thank name you. behind that. So, Persia, I want to thank you for talking to me tonight, and I want to say this. You have to let me thank you. you um, I, 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 oh, hell you're no. You're not a vegetarian, are you? I love meat. I had a hamburger. I had a hamburger today. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I, well, I mean, you know, I had to ask because, you know, a lot of people are ver- uh, uh, vegetarians, vegan, and all kind of shit. So, you know, you have to ask these days. but um. You know, one day, now okay. I don't just do this for anybody. Okay. So this is special. So one day, um, you know, we don't have nothing to do because you're in Fort Lauderdale. I'm in Miami. So it's not like we're, you know, hours away. Um, you know, one day you don't have anything to do. You want to just kick it or whatever. I, this is what I'm going to do for you for thank, you know, I'm mm-hmm. thanking you. Now I told you, you can go on my site and, uh, pick out any shirt that you want, you know, and you have to let me know your size. And whatnot, and I'll send it to you. Um, but I'm. This is also what I'm going to do for you. Okay. Um, I don't do this for everybody. And if you okay. anybody listen to my show, this is special. Okay. I am going to take you out for some very Ooh. good chicken wings. <laughs> well, I love chicken wings. The best chicken wing. Yeah, you know that, that. I mean, everybody loves chicken wings, and I'm gonna take you out for some good chicken wings, you know, and just 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 chill out and just um uh some drinks and whatever, blah blah, and, and just just kick it and you know just uh, two friends out having uh having some fun. You can bring your girlfriend or whatever. It's no, you know, it's no big deal or you know or your boyfriend. Um, you know, just let him know that. Don't, don't be looking no, at No, I'd like to just meet you, just like be it. with you. No, beer and chicken wings sounds good to me. Let's do it soon, okay, honey? Let me know. You have my, you have my number, and um, I would definitely, I'm, I'm going to let you know when I have your stuff up on my site where people can look at it. And I'm going to be promoting this, um, so watch out for that as well. And um, 
I think people are going to enjoy this interview. It was very genuine. Well, thank and, you. Um, I enjoyed I really it too. Enjoyed and the book is you. going to be uh, on Kindle as well, but it's not up on Kindle yet, but it is coming soon. Okay. 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 So, so with them, yeah, it should, less be, than a month it should be up in, in about 10 days, but there's some glitches getting the whole Kindle. The, the Kindle site is a different website oh. than Amazon. So it takes a little bit, but, um, Thank you. Thank you for your support and promoting me. And I really enjoyed your show. You're great to talk with. Yeah, so are you. And thank you again, Persia. Ladies and gentlemen, Persia Monir, who is the author of the Book of John's, go out and get it right now if you don't have it. And Persia, I want to say good night. I you love too, you. Sweetie. You have good a night. very nice night, okay? Bye. You've been listening to The X and Y Show with your host, Roosevelt Colbert, the place where real relationship issues are talked about and addressed. Join us next time. You can now put your clothes back on or not. Uh.